Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Season A, where the platform where we speak truth to power. I wanted to talk about the um, the the NNPC boss, Melekiari. He's now talking about this like, oh, we're a private company. He came into that role as a minister. As a minister. Don't forget, NNPC was only uh, made a, a private company not even a, a year by Buhari. So when they talk about things from the way they, from the manner in which they're talking about this, you start looking at this and start going, what is going on? I, I, I want to, I, I might skip through what he's saying, but don't forget, this man is talking about, oh, um, oh, we're a private company uh, with the shareholders. These are all ways to confuse us. This is the oil that belongs to the people. And this is why we talk about us participating in our governance. Listen to this now. Let me just, um, let's play this for a minute. Let's play. The government did not fund the subsidy because it didn't have the money to fund it. You see? All right. We'll take it one after the other. So where did these uh, dates of June 3rd, the end of June, come from? I think the general understanding that since there is a provision in the Appropriation Act, it means that there's a subsidy regime up to the end of the June. Technically correct, but, you know, budget is budget. You have to fund your budget. If you don't have your, fund your budget, it doesn't exist. So we look at, I mean, the understanding a lot of Nigerians have is that subsidy removal will be effected on 1st of July this year. Exactly. And since there is a budgetary provision for it in the June ended, the why the sudden change of the timeline? The same answer, because the, you have a budget, you do not have to cash to back it, you are not paying for it, that means another... I'm sorry. Once you budget for something, it is budgeted for. That means the funds are there. Don't stop trying to play games with us. You know, some of us know all this thing. When you put a budget in place, it means that you put there's funding in place for the subsidy up until the end of June. None of this semantics that we are hearing. These are all excuses. The institution will carry it. And what happened is the NMPC has been carrying this from its cash flow. Remember that NMPC is a private... NMPC cash flow. NMPC was create, this, created barely six months ago under Buhari, or maybe a year. And you were a government official, government minister. ...company now. It must pay taxes, royalties, just like any other company. And, you know, we're not designed to foot the subsidy bill. Subsidy bill is for the Federation. So why is... They are, this is a deliberate ploy to confuse. But listen on to what he's saying. And the Federation didn't have the money to pay for it. That means technically... The Federation did not have the money to pay for it. This is where they're making... Can you just hear what this man is saying? Oil. We're the third largest oil producing country in the entire world. And this man is sitting here saying with the Federation did have, not have the money to pay for it. Wow. Even when the provision was made in 2022, it should not have continued because, you know, obviously you don't have the money to pay for it. How long has the federal government been owing? Since the start of the uh, end of the pricing. In, Which in, was when? Yeah, when they made the provision in the budget, after 17th of February, and they did not fund it, that means that technically government is not able to fund it since February 2022. So you see, when you, please, understand something, when you provide a budget, that means the funds are already in place. And he's just playing about with words. That's all he's doing. Since February 2022, who has been responsible for paying the subsidy? NNPC Limited, on the back of its cash flow, taking money from our other operations, from our core businesses to foot the subsidy bill with the hope and belief that will be reimbursed. And that reimbursement is not forthcoming. How, you said it's uh, over two trillion now. Yes, it is. That is accumulated, 40 billion every accumulated. month. Accumulated. And what we did, and of course the, this explanation is very useful also, NNPC is supposed to pay... Over two trillion owed. That's what you're saying. So, <sighs> Citizens, we need to ask, probe and question these people. This is a clear case of, I mean, inappropriate, inappropriate uh, you know, misappropriation, whatever you want to call it, of funds. Taxes and royalties. So we held them back. 
Because we can't pay, you can't give me your money, and then you ask me to pay for it. So federal government yes. is owing NNPC, and NNPC is also owing Nigeria. Is that the true situation of things? No, not federal In royalties and in taxes. Federal, yeah. See, the, see, the, yeah. Federal, the federal government there is used supposed to, be, to pay sure. for something. Go ahead, please. There used to be a distinction between federal government and the federation mm -hmm. in terms of the ownership of the old NNPC. This company, the NNPC Limited, is now owned by the federation. That's a distinction. That means whatever NNPC does is doing on behalf of the federation. Mm -hmm. And who's That's the federation? The Therefore, the federation is unable to settle a subsidy bill since the end of the subsidy regime that is brought in, into place by the law since February the 17th. So since that time also, since that uh, obligation of not meeting of the subsidy repayment, NMPC2 has not been yeah. able to meet. Well, its, yeah, its, we can. On top of that, there's still a balance of over 2.8 trillion. Naira. That's the point I'm making. Balance of 2.8 trillion. Naira. So they're taking... You also have ah! a deficit of 2.8 trillion. Naira. A deficit of 2.18. How did that happen? Now, you look at yeah. the jump in the price. As soon as the president made that announcement on Monday, there was a sudden reaction in the marketplace or, uh, in that regard. So there will be a question as to what happens to the 45 days of cushion of supply available of old product that is in store. And the question is, why are Nigerians paying for... Uh, a new price for the old products. Two distinct situations, uh, very separate. Because once there's indication of changes price, which everyone knows that it's likely to be higher price. So two things happen. Consumers will rush to the station so that they can take advantage of the old prices and uh, in anticipation that something will change the next day. So that's why you see motorists go back to the fuel station, sort of buying 10,000 Naira fuel, you buy 20, 30,000 Naira. With the hope that when the prices change the next day, that you would have taken advantage of it. And the other side of it is inventory management. Every This man is not talking about the fact that the subsidy has already been paid for the oil up until June, June 38. And that should mean that there should be no reason for the prices of the oil to suddenly jump a month before June 30th. NNPC should be <coughs> monitoring these funds. I mean, this is, this is, and then they tell us to believe in, 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 in the government when the government is making barefaced lies, telling us barefaced lies. Trading company would hold back that inventory with the belief that when prices change, they can now sell at the, at the new price. And that's not, nothing surprising because if you don't do this because prices are going up, you know, this guy is not able to go back to the market after the change in the prices. So it's very understandable, taking advantage of inventory and it happens. So you're not talking about companies uh, now taking advantage of the price of the oil stock. It is natural. It happens in every commodity, even just as simple as onions. When they know that there's something that will affect price of onion the next month, everyone that has the oil stock will sell it at the highest price. It's very natural. Is that not profiteering uh, over and uh, under the pains of Nigerians, the average people who will be, be at the brunt of this? I, I think this is natural because it does happen. It is not, not natural. But obviously... It is not natural. It is not acceptable. You've left the citizens you're supposed to be serving to be affected by market forces, whilst at the same time refusing to pass on the, the so-called subsidy to, so that they, it reduces the oil for them. I mean, this is... I don't know how you're seeing this, but let's uh, listen on. It's something that is clearly happens under every circumstance. Who is profiting from this now? I don't think it's profiting. Is it the market? Yes, let me tell you. Uh, when you change, have this, you have a cheap price in a product in your hand, and then you now sell it maybe two, three times the price of what you have purchased, but you are going to go back to the market. That means when you go back to the market to procure new supply, you are going to buy at the new price. But literally, you again will be clearly marginal because for you to continue doing that business, you have to add money to buy to, uh, in, the, in the next market. So it's really not uh, something that is substantial. Except well, we are actually saying, let's, let's be very clear. The idea would be there will be no need for people buying this oil um, with, with, with the inbuilt subsidy because, in, in effect, 
when we start processing this on ground ourselves within our country, there's no need for for fuel subsidy to be paid. Because fuel subsidy to be paid is being paid for oil that's been imported to make the prices cheaper. But our own refinery, five refineries, four okay, four five refineries have not have been deliberately, you know, jimmied and 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 and, and and prevent them from working by this government governance so they could pay under the guise of paying subsidy for a subsidy rake in trillions of naira in their own pockets listen on for those who decide to quit say i'm done with this so okay. usually the customers bear the brunt yes yes unfortunately yes. unfortunately they'll have to yes. buy uh, uh, I up uh, with I up uh, uh, price for the old commodity and the old I mean the new price. But the question now is, would this have any effect on other products aside of PMS pet petrol? No, all other products are actually deregulated. Uh, AGO diesel, petrol is the only one that is in in this situation now. AGO uh, the aviation fuel and every other product. Petroleum product actually operating at market level. What happened to the intervention of the CBN uh, at the moment, at the time where aviation fuel went up and CBN intervened at that point? It, it looked to me that there was some kind of intervention or some kind of subsidy that came in at that point, at that time. I wouldn't know if it when is a subsidy. There was a jump in the price sometimes last year where prices of uh, flights increased at the time. CBN made some intervention. Was that kind of subsidy? I, I don't think it's actually subsidy provision because uh, the key issue at that time was access to FX, uh, foreign exchange by marketing companies to import petroleum uh, from uh, the aviation fuel. And what CBN simply did is to provide those resources so that uh, traders can go to the market and bring the product into the market. And I don't think it's, uh, it's any subsidy. Mm. So, so the, the prices won't change for any of the products, diesel, kerosene, aviation fuel? There's no impact of this current change. So it's only absolutely. on petrol? Only on petrol. Now, um, what would you say now, uh, clarity on these fluctuations? Are Nigerians likely to pay even higher than this? Very or lower than this? Very unlikely, but potentially paying lower. Because, remind you, petroleum is priced in the international market. So we have no control of the price of this commodity in the international market. What we have seen, as you see, there are gallops in prices. Every day you see it in the media that the price of crude oil has gone up and come down. So the market fluctuates with that. But the, what this situation has brought is potentially some form of efficiency will come into the system. No doubt about it. What you don't have control is the price of this commodity in the international market. But there are many things you have control of. Your ability to get it to your station at the cheapest possible rate. And that's a factor of many things. Your ability. To this is. I, I don't know. Do, 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 does any Nigerian believe a word that this man is saying? Do you believe a word that's coming out of this man's mouth? <sighs> Negotiate good contracts for your marine activity, your depot activities, all the way to the fuel station, and companies will compete in that space. Just look at people. They don't have you. This man used to be a. It's, it's the government minister. The, that NMPC is only a private company in name. The the, the it, you're sitting on the profits that's meant to go, belong to the citizens. Look at the people we're queuing, and he's just speaking English. Some grammar, meaningless grammar. And because they will compete in that spell, you will definitely see even on the basis of current prices, there will be some, some, some lowering of prices. It's very, very pr practical. Do we have practical? What, what is this talking about? Product. Today, to I have 1.8 billion liters of uh, petroleum motor spirit or premium motor spirit in our hands today. So that means that if you don't do anything, I will have sufficient fuel for the next 30 days in my hands. But of course, the way we supply is not this way. So we maintain this level of supply consistently. That means you will see arrival of products. This is... <sighs> you see why we need to redraw this constitution. These guys have cutted themselves on top of resources belonging to regions that they don't... Season AY here. Please uh, subscribe, hit the notification button. Uh, you're watching Season AY, the platform where we speak to his power. Uh, let's um, please subscribe, hit the notification button, give us a thumbs up.
a amén. Let's listen on. Every day or every other day so that you continue to maintain that le level of safety. Unless anything, uh, I mean, uh, 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 extraordinary happens. Except something else down. So we're not likely to see these queues go on for a long time. Uh, when are we likely to see these queues go away? I don't see it stay beyond another day or two, Max. Hmm. So we will hold you on that. A day to two. Let us see. Few, uh, price. You did not mention the price uh, that you have fixed it, but you said that um, the price has changed of PMS. What is the exact price? We see a list of prices across state. Is that from the NNPC? Yes, you have seen a document in the, in the space there. You know, every company does this, you know. It's a, really a marketing document. It's really not a price announcement document. Every company keeps this record, adjusts it appropriately on the basis of changing conditions in the market. So this is natural. Every company in this business does this. So what you have seen is just an internal company document. It finds its way into the, into the internet. Not surprising. It came from the NNPC? Yes, it is an NPC document, but it was not intended to be an announcement. It is not an announcement because it can change the next day. It can go lower. When we see lower prices, we will bring this down. That means that you have prices by location. Mind you, just as simple as in Abuja here, you know, when people supply AGO, just an example, supply AGO to homes, say in Maitama, you know, people don't want to, those people, Maitama people don't want to go to a fuel station. So the truck driver brings it to your house. So you pay a premium and you probably pay something higher than the man who agrees to go to the fuel station. Even between... All of this is known of our business. What we want is petrol price prices. Low petrol price prices at the pump, whatever. All of this is... This is micromanagement of, a, of something. No wonder we, this is... A, words fail me. What fuel me? Listen on. Fuel station. Two fuel stations aside, you will see customers having different prices in very many jurisdictions. You don't need to be involved in the petrol, petrol stations and all that. The price of the oil to get down, processing the oil within our country, so, with the, so the citizens benefit from their own resources. None of these excuses that we're hearing here. It will happen here. And this will be reflective of the efficiency of that so uh, that owner of that fuel station, choices of the customer, customer management systems, the comfort that they give to their customer, and so many things. You'll we are not interested in all that. It's the price of the oil at the pump that we is interested that, that we're interested in. See those prices. Even when companies put higher prices, you see people driving in, say, "Look, we trust this." For instance, there are a number of fuel stations in this town that customers will go and queue up, even though the prices are same across. A matter of trust, comfort. We're not interested in that. You, it, can you see this guy is just oh, some relations and also long term trust that some of these people have developed? So many things will long term trust in a flawed market. Or don't you realize then the, the fuel market is a it's a flawed market, riddled with corruption that many in government has put in place come to play the market will come to play and once market comes to people customers will have choices so by monday you're telling nigerians tonight that these queues will go away i do not see it. by monday listen no. stay actually beyond saturday but what, what, what kind of uh, i mean what of authority can you give us the authority first you have supply but the key trouble with uh, fms uh, uh, system is supply so i have supply there are over 800 i have supply so it is your personal business the guys Hundred ten million liters of petroleum premium motor spirit or petrol in depots and in tanks and in fuel stations across the country. So you don't have problem of having trouble transferring those from marine into land. So you already have them on loan. That means you have supply on ground in your hands. Now, this is. But the second thing is that people panic, run to fuel stations to buy, and of course those people will not go back now because they now know that there's certainty of pricing. They don't have to go back. When they go back to fuel station the next day, they're going to find fuel at a price that is normalized now. So they're not rushing to go and buy cheap petroleum motor spirit. That goes on. And then, of course, the, the trading companies, the marketing companies that now have set How long are going to suffer, the market has come this into is, effect. Huh? So whatever they are holding back, they know that when you sell, you have sufficient funds from your inventory costs for you to go back to the market. So this a real recirculation of product that is available the market will come into play, and I don't see why this will, will last any longer. In the past, 
whenever you have those glitches of cues, you know, it's a different reason. It's not a pricing that causes it. Yes, so very often it's actually a distribution system problem, and we don't have these trucks, rent. Uh, but the, the underlying issue is that our refineries are not working, and nobody, including yourself, are solving that situation. The refineries would mean that we will be able to process our own oil, reduce the traveling distance of importing processed, processed uh, petroleum that we could do ourselves and it would result in cheaper prices to the tongues of the people. Pure and simple, none of this gibberish that we're hearing. Destroying our roads and so many things, inability strikes, and all this don't exist today. And therefore, normalcy that was actually a knee-jerk reaction will now come back into play. So, tell us for sure, you said there is a, this price fluctuations, and a lot of Nigerians don't even want to understand the English of these uh, market forces because that the price went up is annoying in the first place and a lot of people know that the effect is going to be on the price of commodity price of transportation and in fact in a whole lot of things on their daily living but um, you say that the price may go lower or may go higher it may go I'm very likely to go lower could we have a benchmark? Is it possible? I can't speak about this now because I, I cannot uh, estimate the, the, what the price will be tomorrow. But I have a, a, a sense of the numbers and I believe that this price will come down. So from state to state, why, why the difference? Distance from source of supply, very simple reason that, that you can see those differences. Um, so averagely, uh, we should be able to find cheaper at the NNPC, Philly, own filling station and private filling station. Is that possible? No, you see, this is not market. You know, the, the transfer price at the marine today, that means when the bulk comes, we supply the, at the same price depending on the value of that cargo to every buyer from NNPC, including NNPC retailing. Can you see what all of this nonsense? This is designed to confuse, and they can just, and they sit where they can dictate and take whatever they want out of it. I think this is... Remember... NMPC Retail Limited is now a downstream company, the largest downstream company. It will buy at the same price with any other company. That means the NMPC Retail, our stations, are, our beautiful stations, we would agree with this. You know? <laughs> Across the country... You are advertising. Yeah, absolutely. But I'll send you an invoice. <laughs> yeah, not a problem at <laughs> Go all. ahead, please. Yeah. You know, in our stations, that means that company must compete with the rest of the people you see around. That means, you know, mm. you must make it the price the cheapest that is possible. Nobody is subsidizing NMPC Retail. NMPC Retail must play in the market. They must get the cheapest truck that is possible. They must run their stations efficiently. They must be nice to their customers so that people can come back to it. Otherwise, competition will catch up with them. And I believe that the next filling station, any, it can be any name, you know, can actually sell lower than NMPC Retail. Mr. Carey, the fuel price increase announced by the NNPC was over 150 percent, from 185 per liter to over 500 naira per liter. Is this not too much of an increase at once? Yeah. Are you concerned about the impact on the already impoverished Nigerians? Transportation costs have already gone up as high as 50% in some locations. Yes, uh, it is very correct that uh, the difference between what was the price three days ago and today, yes, is, there's a distinction. So it's a higher price, no doubt about it. But now, could it have been any different? I think that's the proper, proper question. Would it have been cheaper? No. The answer is, if you have to recover your full cost on the basis of the market, then it has to be the prices that you are seeing. The only way you can have lower prices or even a staggered pro process is for you to have subsidy. That means somebody has to take that difference. And that subsidy is the federation, and the federation doesn't have the money to provide for this. And therefore, what you are seeing is the market replative cost because the market, the, the, the institutions, or the, the, all of us, all of us Nigeria who should have provided this subsidy for ourselves, don't have the money to do this. Just imagine. It's not all of us. The government was supposed to provide the refinery to allow for cheaper petrol. All of us that you're talking about is a lie. Listen to those words again, oh. Listen to his words. Because the market, the, the, the institutions, or the, the, all of us. The institutions. What he means that there was no refinery. The refinery has not been allowed to work. The refineries have not been allowed to function. 
all of us in Nigeria who should have provided this subsidy for ourselves don't have the money to do this. Just because the money has been looted. I, I, I hope people can see this. This is... Just imagine, mm. families, and I just as simple as this, you know, families go... We're not interested in your stories. Where are the refineries? Let me show you what I mean. In the middle of all of this, let's put this in the middle of it. To put, give some proper context. You know, current working refinery, current working, let's do this. Current working refineries in Nigeria. How many, how many oil refineries are working in Nigeria? Yeah. I want you to just listen to that too. Nigeria has four state-owned refineries, but they have become deliberated and ideal due to mismanagement. I deliberately put that in the middle of this because when he's talking, he doesn't talk about that at all. He doesn't even mention that. Listen. It's hungry. No breakfast, no lunch, no dinner. It should never happen. But it should never happen. You're right. It should never happen because why? The refinery should have been working. They should have been working. Now, let me go and do something here. I'm just going to do something here. Just want to just see. So they're talking about Dangote. We're not interested in Dangote. Where are the four located? So let's go and look at it. There are four. Two are found in Portacourt. There are four major oil refineries in Nigeria. Two are found in Portacourt. One each in Wari and Cardinal. Uh, Wari and Cardinal. So you got two in Portacourt. And then one in Wari, Wari, one in Cardinal. And, and, and so as far as I understand, there is no oil in Cardinal. It's being shipped there. This is... Wow, my people. Anyway, I'm just giving you, to give you context. So let's listen on to the, what they're spewing out. It does happen. And why does it happen? Because you don't have the resources to find your food. And exactly this is what you are dealing with today. You don't have the resources to provide those uh, sub I'm sorry. We have the resources. You guys have run, you have run the, the, the refinery to the ground, deliberately mismanaged it. It says here. They have become dilapidated and idled, and idled due to mismanagement. But you're not uh, saying that. And therefore, the only thing you can do is to regulate your consumption, come to the prices that is in the market, you buy because you can't afford and can't do anything different. I think this is really the distinction. So for sure, no going back, that's what the president has told you on this subsidy. No, you see, president merely executed the provisions of the law. Let's not even take it to the president. No, but he was the one. I who, understand. I mean, if he had not made that decision, we, they probably wouldn't have. Been not, any a, not at all. And not at all. Would it have happened without it a It would have happened already. because NMPC will not be able to supply product into the country because our cash flow has been terribly diminished. Uh, we, are, we are probably lose. We may probably likely lose the confidence of our supplier. So we knew that this is impossible except there's some financing for it, and we don't see that line of sight. And therefore, what President really did Please just is keep to in mind, the four refineries, the the everything they're saying now, business, they're not talking the about the refineries. That's, that's why I'm showing you. Four state refineries, which are these ones here. To get out of office, Two in Portacourt, one each in Cardinal and Worry. Waiting for another not government at because he said at some point it would have happened. No. But this morning, for the last one year or more, this oh, debt has always uh, been recurrent. But you have kept quiet and left it off. Not at all. Nothing to do with the coming of President Suwaji Bolabe Tunumwe. At all. Because this is the realities. We have kept uh, this conversation on the table. We knew that we were coming to this situation. There were several attempts to bring this into effect. But we've never gotten to the point where it will be impossible for us to continue to supply. This is a distinction. You can imagine. <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. 
citizens, we need to wake up. This is a massive misappropriation of funds. And it's situation because you know that you can afford it. But when you get to a point where you cannot afford it, then it becomes a different conversation. So you have been pushed to the wall. It's not really wall, actually to the sea. Hmm. I mean, we're due for a break now. Nigerians feel that NNPC should have been softer in this increase in the jack in the price, being a government corporation. But ironically, it has one of the highest jump in price ever. No, the, the reality is you are moving from a subsidy regime to a free market regime. That's the distinction. And it's a very and, painful hike. And I understand this. It's painful, but... This painful, but... Please keep in mind, I'll keep showing you this. Four refineries, two in Port Harcourt, Wari and Kaduna. Most of the, these oil reserves are under the control of foreign corporations. We are kidding ourselves. Look, let me read it to you. There are four major oil refineries in Nigeria. There are the, the two are found in Port one each in Wari and Kaduna. Oil reserves are mainly found in the Niger Delta region. Most of these oil reserves are under the control of foreign corporations. So we're not able to have control of our own resources. <sighs> yeah, let's listen on anyway. Let's listen on. Mind you, the subsidy conversation, the other part of it is that, you know, except for some locations in the country, Lagos, Abuja, and a few places, you know, the ordinary man has always paid price higher than the subsidized man. And that is because, and that is because you guys have failed us. You failed and this is very understandable. Arbitrage, all kinds of uh, fraud that happens. Uh, very little you can do. Yeah, fraud. Yeah, like this. Mismanagement. Mismanagement of the refineries. Dilapidated and ideal. And this mis mismanagement of the, uh, of the refinery. All these fine words will not hide what you guys have done. And our oil is owned by... Four oh, man. People taking advantage of the market, regulation can't even contain it, and the reality is that you just and you were a minister, you were a minister, so and you are taking all of this nonsense. Oh, like it's nothing to do with you. Talk to people around the country. Right? There's nowhere pure PMS is petroleum motor speed or petrol is sold at 195 or 100. And that is because you guys have deliberately prevented us from having our own refineries. Because you could make a lot of money by importing or fuel, bad fuel, cheaply made fuel that, that damages the engine and you bear no responsibility whatsoever. It doesn't exist except for some of these few locations I've mentioned. And therefore, the ordinary man has been paying the cost of subsidy. Meanwhile, the, uh, another part of it is also being expended uh, on, on the marketing company. So the advantage of this subsidy... So you agree that the uh, common man has been paying and you are in government and you're not alleviated the pain of the citizens. You're just talking, making excuses. The gym has actually been enjoyed by marketing companies and people who are appropriate around the and, world. And yourself. So what this has done is to take away that value from those who are actually exploiting the ordinary man today back into the pocket of the government so that they, something different can be done. So, Mr. Akari, I mean, yeah. uh, apologies, uh, my producer, because they're telling me I'm due for a break now. Uh, but, but the question I'm asking is that NNPC Air is a government corporation. Yes. It's a, yes, today it's a private company owned by the Federation that is expected to pay taxes and royalty, declare dividends to its shareholders. No matter so shareholders, what. The, 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 the property, the is, is the NNPC here, is the property of the Nigerian the holders, entity, general, The shareholders must decide that this company don't do any business. So who are the shareholders? Just sell petroleum at, at control price for me. And not only that, don't do, make profit, take your profit and go and pick some of your... Should so that the NNPC have put some human angle? Human so who are the shareholders then? Hmm? And face to this increase. This is incremental. This is huge, enormous. You see, if your MPC must recover its cost and sell at the market and there is no subsidy, 
There's very little difference. You but you've been you paid you got paid subsidy. And that the, this is you can do. But the, the challenge today now is not just what NNPC can do. You can actually stagger it. You can say, look, okay, let's take this out in the next six months, seven months, or eight months. That's practical. But it still boils down to one part your ability to continue to provide this product to the yeah. country. And once your cash flow goes to negative, because you cannot supply anymore, and therefore what you are going to deal with is that you are going to have small supply for a large population at a price that is subsidized. And in reality, once you have that scarcity, the customers and the consumers are going to probably buy more than what you are seeing today. Yeah. An average uh, uh, truck of petrol is about 33,000 liters, in, isn't it? My question is not as much. No. It's not as much. <laughs> it's 40,000. But my questions are not as much. But I still have so much more questions to ask. Because a lot of Nigerians are still wondering how they'll be able to get over and get through these very difficult times. We'll take a break. Uh, let me just check one second. In the hands of a few, oh, I mean, trying to portray that it's to the benefit of the poor. It's a racket. But then it looks like that is not it's a the racket. real case. Is that it? Yes, it's the, a racket. The other way of looking at it is that... Something is uh, a racket. When you get subsidy, you will expect that it gets down to the, to the person who should benefit from it. Remember that majority of Nigerians don't own cars. And this probably... The trickle effect of you subsidy see, is that probably it is excuses upon excuses. And that they are able to get back to their places of work, their homes, in the cheapest possible manner. Now, has that objective been achieved? I, I think this is very questionable because, uh, for instance, uh, if you look around... What the objective? Today, you, you are you know, the one... In the last oh, two, three years that we can all remember, there is no time in some states in the country today, and I'm sure Nigeria know this, in some states in the country, southeast, some of the border states, you know, Borno, Yobe, Kano, Kassina, and all the way around the country, there is nowhere between KB State and so on, all the way to, to, the, to people who are living on the other side of Ogun State and so on. There is nowhere you go to the fuel station and you buy petroleum motor spirit or petrol at the at designated official price, which means that price is the price that has... That is because, market. that is because you guys, NNPC, you know, have abdicated its responsibilities. Citizens, I hope you're seeing this is, this man is just... <sighs> those benefits are actually transferred into individuals who, who are running this business. And therefore, up the initial, even without this announcement or without this action that we have taken, the subsidy element is actually goes into the pockets of individuals. You know, that's the reality of marketing companies and other people who are involved in the, in the value chain. Yeah, and, 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 and you guys are the man, ones who open you know, those companies on your behalf. In some of these locations, they're already paying these subsidies to individuals. Many government officials simply open up these companies and resign. When they leave the government, they go and sit in those places, creaming off those money. Amen. And meanwhile, at the same time, government is providing this to the market at the regulated price. But it doesn't work. Now, when you even pull out that segment of our, our, our population now, it comes back to those within some jurisdiction where you are able to realize the actual price. And I can tell you, even in Abuja here, and, uh, that you know, when you just this go just beyond the I can't even... Just outside of the town, there's no fuel station that will sell PMS at the regulated price, except for perhaps, you know, NMPC. Right. What about the regulations? This is making taking no responsibility for the state of which the, the, the fiasco of the fuel subsidy, the hiking of the price, and making the lives of the citizens unbearable. No, you, the NNPC and the government are not taking any responsibility whatsoever. Respect. You know, we are by law, by obligation, and some major marketing companies would definitely sell at the regulated price. I'm not saying everyone. There are good people even in this market who are selling at the regulated price. Uh, that's why the very fact... Oil business is a racket. The fuel subsidy is a racket. It's a racket. That money should have been used to build in refineries, to, uh, to, to fix our refineries. That, you know, many things, wrong things happen around them. But the reality is that these prices are limited to certain limited number of people. And those people are the earliest of the society, I'm unfortunate. Including yourself.
including yourself. I'm one of them. Who are these people? Me and you. Okay. How? Yeah. Everyone else. Like, I can tell you why it, it is so. Because when you have people who own three... To They've even trained this guy to actually try to deflect the question. I mean, and... Oh. I, I find it difficult to watch this further, but let's play anyway. Focus. SUVs. Escorts. And all, of all from that, we all, we all know. And that means that majority of these cars that we are fueling are actually people not using these cars for the purpose of transporting the mass of the people. They are also not using it to transport people to their workplaces. Mostly are business leaders. They take the money from the fuel subsidy, make a profit on that, make a profit on selling the same profit, the cup oil that they've got subsidy on at higher price. Frustrating the lives of the, of the citizens, and then say, "Oh, it's the system." Oh man. Anyway, people who have resources, who have ability, uh, the marginal group of people, particularly in the working class, they exist. Those who have to drive their cars to work, to work, and so on and so forth. It's a very, very marginal set of people who benefit from from this, and this is very reflective in the consumption of. When you have a non-functioning uh, 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 oil market, the last thing you do is to privatize it because that is not part of the solution. You privatize it. This is in the hands of the same people who are telling us, the likes of him, who are telling us, oh, we're, 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 we're now a shareholder. They've taken the p p public wealth, made it a private thing now. <sighs> the percentage of these people in the population yeah, because uh, they're very minor, know. you know, they're insignificant. Maybe you 10, see? 15 percent of the population taking value of 100 percent. That's really what's happening. And, and the government, and, and what's the, and what's so, the federal, now, what is the duty of the federal government that you are in? The effect, mm. and that's very critical, the effect comes to the ordinary man because some of the transport means that you are seeing for the ordinary people are so. This guy is talking nonsense. I'm sorry. They should, and they have no shame. A, a very small number of them are actually driven by petrol. Kekena pips and some of the small cars that you are seeing around. Yes. Can you see all of this? They're spinning a big yarn, telling stories, take, telling porkies. When this is, the central issue remains one, the failure of several governments to ensure that our refinery or processing the oil giving the customer citizens real uh, low ma low market low value uh, um, 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 i mean uh, cheap cheap petrol and the benefits of all of this are going to foreign companies and of course the 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 the, the, the bunch of crooks the racketeers that's what affects the ordinary man other than that Majority of the fuel that comes on, unfortunately or unfortunately, those categories of the vehicles are the ones that consume the least amount, quantity of fuel. I mean, there, there are a lot of controversies yeah. here. Yeah. There are those, there are subsidy thieves, so those who yes. got, get money and yes. never get uh, get the job done. They never get it done. Subsidy payment. And that's, the, government, the, the government should be in there doing this, but the government is not taking responsibility. And it, it's washed its hands away from that. There's also the controversy over our porous borders. And most of these subsidized products does not even stay, do not even stay in Niger on Nigerian soil. They go into uh, um, uh, neighboring country. There's the other controversy on the amount of uh, petrol that we even consume. I mean, let me start by, uh, by, by asking you, do we know officially how much of petrol do, uh, that is consumed in Nigeria every day? I think at the risk of being repetitive, I don't think there's any credible data on consumption, but there's credible data on evacuation from the depot. <laughs> and that's all it. So yeah, there's no data until we can forget that. It doesn't matter. That, you see, that's, they're hiding something. They're hiding something. Oh, man. Citizens, unless we be all g g begin to hold these people to account, nothing will change. Oh. Nothing will change. But they are very distinct. So every truck that leaves every depot in this country is known, the truck number, the driver, the planned destination of that product. So it is... So how come there were until four million, uh, four kilometer long pipe outside into where, where boats were hooking up and taking the oil? How come? No, so we have numbers around this. 
And that, those numbers is what we assume is our consumption, but we know that this may not be our consumption because we know that the petroleum products are smuggled is across this, the country. Is, this, we know a number of wrong things may happen, even if, by marine means taken to other jurisdictions. So we do not know how much of petrol we consume daily. We know how much we supply. Like we know how much leaves the fuel depots. There is data on this. But when you say is is all of this consumed in the country, the answer is no. And and the, the reason is very simple. And why is the government not doing anything about that? You have an arbitrage environment. For instance, before this decision that we have made, you know, fuel sales were say 125 naira in Abuja. And now, just across your border. In very many, there's nowhere you have prices that is lower than 500 naira to the liter. So it doesn't exist. And therefore, when you take just an example so that you can appreciate really what we are doing and how we are actually subsidizing everybody else in West Africa. And I can tell you personal experience. I traveled to Sudan for a visit. And I was, a Nigerian made me say, hey, gentlemen, I understand you work well. And this man is a former government minister. NNPC, can you help me have access to fuel because people are bringing fuel here to make money from it? That means the fuel in this country goes as far as the Sudan. And of course, for other countries, so of course. It and that's, and you are, and you are, in the, and this man, this is making an admission. This guy should all be arrested. You <sighs> can't even talk about it, you know, around us. They call it Nigerian fuel in many countries. And very many of these countries, and there is data to back it up. None of these countries around are now import. So what is the government doing about this? It's our borders. It's our. It's the system. It's the racket. Petroleum product, and you can do nothing about it because there's an arbitrage environment that we have created. You have four thousand five hundred kilometers of land border. You know you do not have all the resources to man this. And by the way, it's not manned by by angels. I can tell you the, this subsidy uh, embryo or these issues that is created by, uh, by this arbitrage that we have created. You know, it can compromise anything. You can't exclude anything. And of course, what you see, let me give you an example. When you take a, a, a truck of PMS, 60... He's a man in government. And he's just telling us, oh, in effect, they don't even, they have no solution to the problem. But they're in government. Thousand liters from Lagos into Medugri. Legitimately, the margin for the trader is about 300,000 naira. Imagine you need that 300,000 naira to service your fuel station, pay your workers, and of course, if you are able to sell it in one week, then you have to come back and, and uh, assume you are able to do three or four. That means you're only making one million from four trucks that is going to cost you about. So, why are we not building the refineries locally? Why are we making sure we maintain this? But 8 million naira to buy it in the first instance. But this same product, when you take it across the border, you will make 12 to 17 million naira. Imagine what you will do to stop this. And the only thing that can solve it, just like cocaine, why do cocaine price higher? It's cheaper in one place, more expensive in another so place. So with People this new it. regime, yes. will it stop or tame this? Because the price now will be almost at par with what is being sold. The reason why our fuel is very popular out, 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 outside of the country is because it's probably cheaper. We are doing two things. One of them is that we are serving countries around us the risks of foreign exchange. That means they do not have to go to the banks to get letters of credit to import products into their countries. That's one risk that you have taken. And then the second risk is that because you are doing it for them, and it's cheaper. So why would I go to the international market and buy and bring products into our country? And that means we say it's a double jeopardy for us. Mm -hmm. And that means uh, it's reasonable to, to assume that once you remove this arbitrage, once it is not substantial, countries will see that they are better off going to the market to buy themselves because it is now at, at par with the market. And probably there are distance issues, uh, a lot of arbitrages along the pathway, and obviously the prices will just be mirror what they have in their country, and there will be no need for the smuggling. So the smuggling will reduce. That's, we'll, we'll, that's, we'll that's, reduce. that's the bottom line. It may not terminate it, but it will substantially come down, I believe this. How can we fix this issue of smuggling? 
I think we combat it to market because uh, remember that uh, the objective of this country to be the supplier to the West Africans and around us. And once you become a supplier, it becomes market. You can have legitimate business with this country. We're already doing that, by the way. We're engaging uh, two or three of countries. We're expanding our business into some country. We're already in the Republic of Benin. We are also expanding our business. It's going to be a business. So the, you don't need to smuggle? You don't need to smuggle. Since the, but pipelines are, have been said to be the, the, the best way of transporting this product. What is the integrity of our pipelines? Our pipelines are in very, very difficult situation. First, aging, and secondly, the acts of bundles. They have practically made it impossible for us to transport petroleum motor spirit in, in most of our pipelines. That's because of bad governance. Deny people access to those resources. We are doing it on the way from uh, Atlas Corp into satellite. Uh, uh, we're we going to get back the line into, into Mosimi, yes. But let me give you an example. For the last 17 years, we were unable to form a liter of product from Wari into Bini. And the reason is very simple. The bandas have made it impossible for us to, be, uh, to operate this line. At a point, in so many of our lines, we are losing up to 24% of the product that we pump into the line. So there's no other way of doing it than to shut it down because you can't operate it. No one will lose 24% of his product. And there are modern way to, uh, to, to monitor these pipelines? That's what we're I'm getting. very sure that. That's what we're not monitoring. Ways. The pipelines have aged. We have started a process that is going to replace this pipeline with two things. One, different approach. I'm not going to speak about it so that the bandas don't take position. And then the second part is that there will be application of technology, and going forward, that will be his. The new Dangote refinery, yes. how do we transport from Lagos? By truck for now. Uh, for Otherwise, now. we, by we truck are for now. engaging and will supply products into our depots by marine and will come into Can the Can you see this? Uh, pipelines. So let me ask you, Nigerians need to be supported so that they can cope with the shocks uh, of this sharp increase in petrol price. What are your thoughts or what would you suggest would be a way to help them cope, or I mean, to cushion the effect of these uh, remover and this new price regime. Yeah, two things. I'm aware and I'm involved in a process of engagement for immediate relief that can come to Nigeria. I don't want to speak about it at this point, but I know that steps are being taken by government to ensure that some reliefs are provided short term and immediately, and also some relief that will be provided in the medium term. And all of them will cumulatively come to the effect of having some ability to pay for the petroleum product, also cushion the effects of it on other sectors of our life, and also potentially provide cheap fuel going forward. And that cheap fuel means that, you know, combustion to gas, and of course that's not going to switch in tomorrow, but I know that there are engagements that are going on to see this. There are details that are being worked out. We're engaging all stakeholders, including level unions, to see how that can be made available to all of Nigerians. So, Confirm to us the level of crude oil production as of today. As today, you know, when you say crude oil production, and it's very good to correct this, you know, in the media you see a number of, oh, we're just doing one million uh, bar 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 barrels of it. That's not correct. You know, the budget of this country is based on the cumulative of our production of crude oil and condensate. Mind you, uh, sometimes this condensate is actually more expensive than the crude oil. So it's the total liquids that we're dealing with. Those total liquid today, in today's production, we're up to 1.6 million barrels for production. We'll have a line of sight. By the end of July, we will hit the 1.8 million, and very potentially we'll hit the 2 million barrels per day by the end of, uh, uh, end of December. This is practical. All things being equal, I'm sure you have heard what Mr. President has said. Our security agencies go and, and attack oil tips. And the key issue we have is the challenge of security. Many steps have been taken. We are seeing the result of some of this, but we know that additional layer of intervention will be very, very useful. And the combination of that and return to business by our partners will make sure that these realities come into play. So, I mean, you said earlier that uh, the, it's difficult to get the data on, the, on consumption, of the daily consumption. But and as a government CEO official. of NNPC, you, can, you cannot tell Nigerians how much petrol is consumed in Nigeria. But have you consciously made effort in our obtaining they can't data. tell how much petrol we consume. Clear data, consume. I believe that we have over 60 to 70 percent of all data in the authority. You know, remember that it is a regulator's role. We have the Nigeria Ministry and does regulatory authority. It keeps those data. Those records are there. I know that there are a number of interve interventions that have been put into place, and many that are ongoing to ensure that we have end-to-end -end visibility around petrol as it leaves the depot into fuel station. As Mind it, you, in very many jurisdictions... As we speak now, they don't have the data. 
That's all. They don't have the data. Station, but I know that the authority is working on this. You will be required to do installations in your... Everything is being... They, will, they, will, they, they haven't done it. Uh, I'm going to end it because ev this everything here is just waffle. It's just waffle. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Citizen Network, the platform where we speak to you about. I'm going to uh, wrap it up. You make of what you've heard so far. What do you think? Do you trust anything has been said in terms of the sub subsidy? And w everything they say, do you have a confidence at all? Do you? Uh, you're watching the Citizen Network, the platform where we speak to you to power. Let me um, please urge you again. Subscribe to Citizen Network. Hit the notification button and, of course, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe, hit the notification button, and, of course, give us a thumb up, thumbs up. Let's have, have your comment. Thank you for watching. You're watching Citizen Network, the platform where we speak truth to power. Bye for now. Bye for now.